What is up guys? It is Steve Cook here. I'm gonna be doing uh, something new on my YouTube. Well, I've done it before. If you guys have seen like my real talks, my just sitting down with the camera and doing a one take, just like a conversation I have with you guys, like it's almost like a podcast because it's just a one take about a topic that I feel passionately about. I'm gonna start doing these once a week. We're gonna call them Sundays with Steve. It's super original, I know. So I'm actually at Fitness Culture here on Sunday in my office. I'm the only one up here. And I kinda like it that way, because I've been kind of, you know, I've been thinking about what I wanted to kind of talk about. Because there's always things that happen during the week. I'm like, ah, I would love to share that. And I know we give out so much workout stuff. We just launched our app, which I'm always gonna include in our description. Um, it's, it's awesome training and things like that, but I don't feel like I talk enough about things outside of the gym. And even though I'm in the gym right now, I want to talk about things that are outside of the gym. And I think it's powerful, one take, so you guys are going to see me just take out my gum right there. I think it's powerful um, to be just transparent. One, one take just means it's very real, very honest, and I think that these Sunday with Steve, can I say that Sundays with me, Sundays with Steve? Um, I just thought it was a cool name. It's gonna be something that isn't always workout related. Now it might be health related. We might talk about nutrition, or we might talk about whatever, supplementation, um, but we're also just gonna talk about things that, that I feel like um, are things that need to be addressed. Things that I see out there that, that for a lack of better words, that I just am like, yo, that's, I see an issue there, or I see something that I want to promote, or I want to make sure I, I have, you know, I'm trying to better the, the platform. Because I guess, I don't want to be just this guy that's known for, for working out. So if you guys just want to watch the workout stuff, so that's great. We're going to be uploading tons and tons of footage. Um, actually, to that point, I'm going to be doing videos every single day. Videos every single day for... Well, until I reach a million. That's a goal of mine. I've always wanted to kind of do it. And I was talking with my buddy, Lewis Howes, um, who kind of challenged me. He said, Steve, what would it take to get you to do videos every single day? And I said, Lewis, I've been thinking about it. It would be really, really cool. I've always just been scared. It's a lot to commit to. And he's like, well, you know, what if you just even have, have you know, something like this, where you just sit down with the camera. I'm like, you know, I could, I could do some videos like that. And I think it's important to me because there's, there's things out there that I want to talk to people about that besides on how to do a curl. So thank you, Lewis, for kind of inspiring me to take on this. It's, it's a big thing to bite off and chew. I'm at like 930,000 subs right now. We're going to try to get to a million, and I want to do this just to kind of challenge myself. After that, if it's going well, we might keep it up for a year. Who knows? But let's get back. I digress. Let's get back into what I want to talk about today. And what I want to talk about today is something... It has to do with even what we're doing right now, social media. Social media is the best and worst thing that's ever happened to me. So when I'm talking to you guys about all this stuff, just let, just, just let it be known that it's coming from a place where I've been there, I've gone through all of these things that are talking about, I've, I've, I've caught myself doing these things. I have issues with social media myself. I'm on it too much. I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm at fault for a lot of the things that I want to be speaking about. So first and foremost, I want to let you guys know I'm not condemning anyone here or anything. I just know that and kind of reflecting in my life, these are some of the issues that I have that I know other people have talked about this before. You know, I'll scroll through my Instagram and Twitter feed and I just was noticing this this morning and that's when I was like, you know what, I want to talk about this. I get anxiety after looking at social media and I had to go through and, and unfollow some accounts and things like that and I have to ask myself, you know, what, what is social media in my life? What does it mean? Yes, it's a, it's a way for me to have a business and have a career, but what is, it to doing, what is it doing to me on a personal level? What is it doing to my relationships with other real people and how can I make it something that is a positive thing in my life? Because social media, I'm not condemning social media it can be a very great thing in moderation with the right mindset. And I think that that can quickly turn into some of the things I want to talk about. So here I have this bad boy is a concept map. Take me back to my, my college days. I was a biology psychology major. 
And my psychology, if it taught, taught me anything, it was like, you know, it taught me to take a step back and actually be conscious of how I digest information and how I'm thinking. Like, to actually stop and be like, oh, I'm actually, that's a very negative way of thinking about that, or that's a very interesting way. And you, you kind of have this self realization of, of what you're doing and, and how you're perceiving the world. So, I mean, first things first, social media. We have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. And I know some of you guys are saying, Steve, Steve makes his money off of social media. Steve's uploading a video every day. I wanna be better. I wanna be better about the content and the things I put out there on social media because scrolling through my Instagram, scrolling through my Twitters, there's so much A, negativity in the world, bullying, there's so much look at me, look at me, look at me that I feel like if I can put out some videos like this, it's gonna help things out on social media to not only for myself as a reminder, but maybe to some of you guys that are going through some of the things I'm gonna talk about. So first things first, social media. Let's just talk about waste of time. How many of us, and me personally, this is my biggest problem, I'm constantly checking this. This thing right here, this phone, this smartphone, when I was in high school and, and phones, like good cell phones started coming out, this phone, you know, I could never have imagined all the things we can do on this. I think I read an article, it's like, this device, 20 years ago, you had to have like 10 devices to do everything this can. So, great tool to have, but also crazy responsibility. We can search the internet, we can find anything, everything's always at a fingertip. And what that constantly means is every single beep and ding and social media alert, it's taking our attention elsewhere. Waste of time, waste of time, waste of time. How many of us check our phones first thing in the morning? I'm guilty of that, I sleep next to it, next to my bed. I want that to stop. How many of us are guilty of going to sleep and this being the last thing we check at night? That's awful for your circadian rhythms because the light, obviously you guys probably know this, the light that it emits keeps our mind awake, tells us, tells our brain that it's not nighttime. So if you're having sleep problems, maybe one of the first things you wanna look at is backing off of your phone, backing off of social media. So I feel like I've almost created this like adult onset ADHD. I've never like gone to the doctor, but I feel like I'm just constantly nervous habit. I'm talking, I'm talking every five seconds, just kind of like, oh, what's going on there? I think that they said the average person checks their phone over a hundred times a day. I'm well, well, well over that, I believe. So that's my biggest issue I have right now, I think, with social media. And what it does is, if it was one of those things that I felt great after checking my phone, it wouldn't be an issue. But how many of us have scrolled, wasted a half hour, 40 minutes on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and you get off, and you just feel icky almost. You just feel like, it's not like the same feeling you get from a great conversation with a friend or family. It's not the same feeling you get from reading a book. It's not the same feeling you get from exercise. It's this feeling of staring at this phone, like your eyes are squinted, your eyes hurt afterwards, but also on the inside, you don't feel good. Because you've, what you've constantly done is you've put yourself up. You've put your own life up against everything else you've seen. Which brings me to my next point. Social media sets unrealistic expectations. Social media is a highlight reel of everyone's life. And all that means is people are posting their best pictures. You know, in, in the fitness world, everyone's shredded. Everyone's so dice. It's who can be the most shredded? Who can be the most hand jacked on a beach? You know, like, and that's, that, that is just, it's unrealistic. People have jobs. People have ups and downs in their life. We wake up and we have bedhead and we have, you know, it's just, it's not realistic to, to think that everyone just should be hanging out on a beach in Bali with this amazing tan at 6% body fat with this amazing dime on their shoulder, this amazing girl or vice versa, the girl or this handsome guy. It's just unrealistic. And all of a sudden it just breeds this a feeling of like, I'm not doing enough in my life. I don't make enough money. I don't have the friends that I want. I'm not famous enough, blah, 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 blah. And what it does is it, it, also, it also just creates this feeling of inadequacy. It, it presents this feeling that this grass is always greener on the other side. My girlfriend's not pretty enough. I don't have good enough abs. I don't drive a cool car. And all of a sudden we're just self, just self-hating, self-hatred all the time. And what that also does is it makes you resent other people out there that are doing those things, that are posting. And I'm not saying you have to hate on those people, but just realize that that's not real life. And make, it, make yourself aware of what you're posting. What you're posting 
because we, what we do is we end up posting things, we end up talking about things, and I guess I'm speaking mainly to Facebook and, and Instagram right now, we end up posting things that we know are gonna get us our most likes. We're gonna, get, we're gonna post things that are, are gonna get us comments and this wow factor, and we're always trying to one-up our last post or one-up someone else's post because we're now getting our self-worth from other people liking our content, other people engaging with our content. And I'm guilty of this. I'll post something if it doesn't get great lights, I'm like, aww. And it, you know, if you're out there and if you have, you're running a business, obviously you want to be cognizant of what gets the likes. But we live into this world where posting things, Dan Blitzerian. Dan Blitzerian is a guy that's made a living off of posting hot chicks, guns, and like, and, and just crazy stuff on Instagram. And what it does is it kind of creates this culture that that's okay to post. We can post anything. You know, everyone should have 10 girls around them in a bikini. And I just think that all of a sudden, like, we're just self-promoting. We're just self-promoting trying to, trying to just say, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. And that's, that will eventually not make us feel good about ourselves. I think the quickest way to feel happiness in your life is to serve other people. It's hard to serve other people when you're posting things to get that immediate gratification of, oh, people like my photo. I got 50,000 likes, or 100,000 likes, or 500 likes. It's my most liked photo, great. <gasps> Yay, good for me. That's not real life. It's just, it, only, it leads us to only posting the good things and never talking about the struggles. And then when people are struggling, it makes them feel like they're alone because everyone else is doing so, so great on YouTube or on, on wherever. So get it, getting likes on things, people, getting likes on things doesn't legitimize the content you're putting out there. And I know there's people, and I've been victim of, I've definitely done this before, where thumbnails, thumbnails and you know titles, clickbait, because you want to get likes. And I, and I understand that on YouTube, you have to be somewhat interesting, just like a reality TV show or whatever. You have to be interesting, you have to be, even magazines would do this back in the day, five quick tips, this and that. I'm saying as we as, as consumers, you need to just watch that. Um, it's just, it's, it's something I see myself doing a lot. And then what, what happens with all of that, because I'm so engaged as to what like this complete total stranger is thinking and saying about me, that I'm giving power to people that don't have any real connection with you. I mean, we think, we think we can air out and do and say whatever. We share the most private, intimate things, sometimes with social media, rather than those we love. It's like we have a relationship with social media that is more important to us than those with actual people who love and care about us. And then we get mad or upset when you shared something so intimate and so detailed about your life, and then you get somebody that comes back and kind of hates on you. Some complete stranger. It could be a 16-year-old kid at home just saying something on his, you know, that keyboard warrior Cyberbullying. We don't think that, that what we talk about and the things and we don't act like people, celebrities or whoever are real people. We think on Twitter we can do and say whatever it is that we want and it doesn't have any kind of consequence or reaction or it just that there's no human connection there. It takes out all emotional connection to your fellow man. And I think that that's something that we can look at society and really feel like, man, that, that is leading us into a, a bad place. If there's no real, you, you don't know, it's on social media, you, you see some of the worst things in the world. People say things about kids, about killing and this and that, and you're just wondering, where is this coming from? Why are people so hateful out there? But I think it's because there's no emotional interaction. And even on the flip side of that, the positive emotional interaction, LOL. You know, we get into this like, we're always on our phones that, you know, when you're around people, you're not really engaging them with on a deeper level because you have whatever, 300 friends on Facebook that you, you see their stuff maybe all the time. And so you have these surface level relationships with people rather than having people around you that you truly love and care about and vice versa. So you're like, oh, you know, like, you know, I stay in touch with my family, but what, what we're doing is just very surface level. You're not, you're not really caring about people and pe vice versa, people don't really care about you as deeply as they did when I feel like social media didn't exist. Now it's great, it's great that you can keep track of old high school people and drop in and say hi, happy birthday or whatnot, but don't let that surface level, don't let the ability that you can at, at any given second DM someone or, or like their photo, that's not real human interaction. Real human interaction with someone you care about is sitting down with them 
putting your phone away, having a cup of coffee and talking to them about how their day is. What, what are they struggling with? You know, how many times are we in a social setting where we are constantly on our phone? I know I'm guilty of that. Constantly on our phone talking to people, looking at how many likes you have and not really engaging. We're there, but we're not there. We're with our families, but we're not really with our families, giving them our, our total undivided attention. And that's something that I know I'm guilty of. And I'm, 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 I'm wondering, and I want to know even on this video, what do you guys do? What are some of the parameters you guys set to make sure social media doesn't become a negative thing in your life? Because it can lead to depression. It can lead to people thinking that their life's not good enough, thinking they're not good enough, suicidal thoughts. These things are real. And it's important that we talk about these things, that we don't just post highlight reels. <sighs> Anyhow, I just want, I want to be more cognizant of, or more aware of what I post, more self-aware of what I like, more self-aware of the people I follow. Am I, am I liking this photo? Because yes, there's, there's fun things out there. There's that, you know, goals, hashtag goals. But really like, what are you, what are you digesting? Because what, you know, who we are and what we become, they say are, are the five people we're around the most. Well now let's say you, the five people you follow the most, those people have an influence in your life. And if you want to be the type of person, if you want to be the exact same type of person from those that you follow, keep following those people. But if they're posting things that are, you know what, that, that's great that they have all that money or they have that girl or they're doing that or that, but are they really happy? And I would, I would, I would dare say that the people you think on social media are the happiest are the people that are the most scared and don't know where to turn in life feeding off of likes and comments and complete strangers out there. Not, not so worried about, am I gonna stay at the top of my game? And I can say this because I've been there. I've been that person. So please, 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 get on social media, be a positive influence out there. Watch what you post, watch what you like, watch what you digest, watch the amount of time you spend on there. And let's make social media something that doesn't have to be a negative thing. That's today's topic, today's conversation. Again, this was all just a one take. Um, I'm gonna do more of these. Sundays with Steve. Thank you, Lewis House, for pushing me to do something like this because I wouldn't have probably done it if we hadn't had that conversation. If you guys aren't following Lewis, he's a great guy. And I think, um, yeah, we're gonna do more of these. But let me know in the comments below, you know, maybe next week's topic. It doesn't always have to be so serious, um, but it needed to be said. So thank you guys so much for following, and we'll catch you guys next time.